I'm BJ from RidersWholesale.com. It's a beautiful day here in North Carolina. We're at one of our favorite riding spots, and we've got our brand new Lin High Bighorn 28 here. We're going to show you all about this machine. We're going to show you what it's capable of doing, and I'm going to try to show you every feature of the machine. There's so many to show you, I might miss a few, but you're going to come to love this machine. Whenever this machine was developed and built, it was built with the true sportsman in mind and the true workman in mind. You're going to be able to get work and pleasure. You're going to be able to do anything with this UTV that you could possibly think of doing. And it's the best in its class and the mid-size class. So let me get to showing you all the features. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you about this UTV is my favorite thing. I've driven a lot of things over the years ever since I was real little and this is really important to me is the steering wheel. You've, the steering wheel is molded here for driver comfort and you've also got different molds here on the bottom of the steering wheel for driver comfort, whichever way you want to hold it. Another important thing is, is this is a rack and pinion steering. It steers on a dime and it don't have no power steering. You don't really need power steering because everything's designed right. You're going to find that it's really easy to turn. It takes little effort to so somebody that um, you know, as older, a lot of times it's a whole lot easier for them to turn and drive this UTV. The next thing is, is your digital dash here. I'm going to show you it. Okay, up here on your dash, you're going to see your fuel hand. It's full whenever the bars are up to the top. It's empty whenever the bars are to the bottom. Your mile per hour. This right here is your heat hand. Most of the time, it'll run right in the middle. Right here is your RPMs. And then the miles that you put on your machine, if you mash this button here, it shows you how many hours that you have on the machine. You mash that button there to go back to miles. Up here in the top of the gauge package, you got some indicator lights. This right here is the neutral light. It's got to be a neutral to crank it. This is your high beam and low beam light. Right now, the high beams are on. This right here is your reverse light. Whenever you're in reverse, that right there will light up. To crank this machine, it's fairly simple. On a real cold morning, you got a hand choke right here. You need to pull that out if it's cold, let it warm up. After it warms up, you know, push your choke back in. But you simply just put your foot on the brake pedal and turn the switch. It fires right up. Also, after it cranks up, you can see that the machine's in four-wheel drive right now. Whenever you switch it over to two-wheel drive, the two-wheel drive will light up. And how you do that is this button right here on the dash. You can see it's in four-wheel drive right now. You flip it down for two-wheel drive. Right under that is a park brake light. That light will come on whenever the park brake's on, so make sure you look at that light and let your park brake off if it's on. This right here is where you turn your lights on and off. That right there is the off position. That right there is the on position. This is your high beam and low beam headlight switch. This right here is your kill switch, too. If it's in that position there, your machine will not start. I have a lot of people that call us all the time and they have these kill switches on and their machine won't start. So make sure that if your machine doesn't start, the first thing you check is that kill switch right there. You've got a reverse override switch right here. Whenever you have this in reverse and you mash the gas, it's got a rev limiter and it won't give the machine full power. But if you get in a sticky situation to where you need to give the machine full power, just press this switch down and hold it and it'll give it full power while you're in reverse. You've also got a plug right here to charge any accessories that you'd like to take out there on the trail with you. It comes in really handy whenever you get way out there. Now I'm going to show you the rest of the cab. Over here is your gear shifter. You simply just shift it in the high range, straight forward, or if you want to go in the low range, push it over to the right and straight forward, straight back into neutral. The gears in this are really tight. Straight back in the reverse. That's it. That's all you got to do. So it's fairly you know, driver easy. This right here is your handbrake. To let it off, you just mash the push button in. To let it off, you just pull it up like that to put the brake on. You've also got two large drink holders right here in the center console. Them come in handy too. These seats too, you can see that I'm real comfortable in these seats. These are memory foam seats. The back's memory foam and then you got your headrests that are memory foam. And they're also covered in a very good cover that's going to last out there in the weather for 15, 20 years. Shouldn't never go bad. You've also got a large dash over here on this side. It's lockable too. You can take anything with you that you'd like to take with you out there on the trail. Lock it up in there. 
Another thing is, is you have these large rugged plastic doors on the side. They come in really, really handy. I used to not like the plastic doors on the machines, but after riding in the mud or having a stick almost come in the cab, these right here keep you safe and they keep you dry. You've got a large handle here. They're really easy to lock and unlock. You can straighten them doors out and you can open both doors too and you can walk all the way through the cab here. And it also makes it real easy to clean the machine. You'll be surprised at how quick you can clean the mud and how usual friendly that is. Now I'm gonna go over here on the other side. <clears throat> And up under this seat here, you just pop it up. You've got a lot of storage up under this seat too to take your tools with you, whatever you'd like to take out there with you. A lot of people turn that into a cooler. This right here is where your motor is on this machine. You have a 28 horsepower engine, tons of torque. You won't believe the torque that this engine puts out. It's carbureted. It runs like an EFI unit, better than an EFI unit. It also comes standard with a rugged top. It's weather resistant. You've also got the end of the tires on this machine. They're gonna get you in and out of any sticky situation. You've got a beveled edge, thick chrome alloy wheel. You can see that's a really nice wheel that they put on this machine. Now I'm gonna show you up under the hood of the machine. Up here in the front is where you're gonna open your hood. Just reach up under your bumper here pull your straps down, then your hood picks right up. Kind of lay it back against them bars if you don't have a windshield on it. Up here in the front, I just want you to look at the welds and how nice this all is put together and how beefy the frame is on this machine. Right here is your winch plate. This is where your winch will mount. Right here is your radiator cap. This is where you add your radiator coolant. You have your master cylinder reservoir right here. That's where you add brake fluid if you ever need to add any brake fluid. This here is your battery box. Your battery is located in there, and you also your fuse panel is located in there, along with some other electrical items that you shouldn't ever have to touch. If you have to, you can refer back to your owner's manual and read all about that stuff. It's got the McPherson struts on the front of it. Look how thick the struts are and how the bracing is on the struts. You got a single A-frame on the bottom with a heavy-duty heat-treated axle. This is a water-cooled unit as well. And then you got your rack and pinion steering behind that. You've also got disc brakes on the front of this machine. It's a dual piston caliper, so it stops on a dime. It's real easy to stop. You just barely press on the brake pedal, and you ain't going to believe how much brakes that you actually got. It's actually made for towing a real heavy load and stopping really fast if you need to. This right here is where you adjust your headlights. If they're never, if they're, this right here is where you adjust your headlights. If you ever need to adjust your headlights, that's where you adjust them. You can refer back to your owner's manual there. That's it for under the hood. Now we're gonna move on to the back of our machine. Um, go out to the major dealerships and check and look. This is a full metal bed back here. You got metal sides, you got a metal bottom, metal front, and a metal tailgate. You've also got four tie downs in the bed all the way around, and it'll hold up to 500 pounds of payload too. Check your specs and see. Over here is your dump lever. You've got a dump lever on the other side as well, so you can be on the other side of the machine if you want to dump it. It's perfectly balanced too for a load to dump. All you do is is treat your lever and it's spring assist. And then to shut it, it's real easy to shut. You can shut it with one hand. That's what I like about it. A lot of beds, you go to shut them, you see how much effort it takes to shut. It don't take no effort whatsoever to shut this bed. Now I'm going to go around here and show you the tailgate. To fold it down, you just fold these out and fold your tailgate down. Real simple. Okay, back here in the back of our UTV, we got the rear independent suspension. You don't even hardly know you're out there on the trail riding with this suspension. Coolover shocks, they're also adjustable. Right now they're set in the medium position. You can soften these springs or you can stiffen these springs, whichever one you like. You've also got a dual piston caliper back here 
and disc brakes on the rear of this machine as well. You've also got a place here for a receiver hitch. This unit will pull 1,500 pounds. Go out and compare it to every other unit there is in the mid-size class, and you're going to see that we're going to be able to pull more payload with this machine, do more work with this machine, have more fun with this machine than you are any other machine out there. So now we're going to go ride it some and let you see what it'll do.